Today I want to take a quick look at the Unify USW Enterprise 8 port PoE switch. This switch has eight 2.5 gigabit PoE plus ports and two SFP plus 10 gigabit ports. Stick around and watch the rest of this video if you want to find out more about this product. I did a recent video on my 2022 network upgrade where I've been moving much of my networking from random devices to Unify Ubiquity equipment, mainly to simplify configurations as well as to simplify the process of making changes. In addition, I also upgraded my access points to the U6 Enterprise, which now support Wi-Fi 6E standard. And depending on the devices that you use to connect to Wi-Fi, you may actually have to have a 2.5 gigabit PoE switch to take full advantage of the speed. When I first tested the new iPad, the performance was the same on both 1 gigabit and 2.5 gigabit, as it simply wasn't taking full advantage of the 6E standard. But when I tested PCI adapter cards, the story changed quite a bit, and to fully exploit the speed of these adapter cards, you really need to have a 2.5 gigabit connection. So this takes us to the USW Enterprise 8 PoE Plus switch from Ubiquity. This thing has eight 2.5 gigabit PoE Plus ports, and two SFP Plus ports that support 10 gigabit, which is capable of handling multiple 6E access points, as well as many other devices. It has a power budget of about 120 watts, so you should be able to power just about anything you need from it. As you can see, this isn't a rack mount switch like much of the Unify devices, and it's really designed to fit on a shelf or a desktop, or even behind a desk. Like most of the Unify products, there's not much in the way of external switches or buttons. And in the back, you only get a power cord, which uses their locking mechanism. And in the front, you have a 1.3 inch display, eight two and a half gigabit PoE ports. And to the right of that, you have the two SFP plus ports, which are capable of 10 gigabit that you can use to uplink or to connect to other switches. This also comes with a mounting bracket should you want to mount this on a wall or behind a desk. Being a non rack mounted device, and physically looking at this switch, you'd assume that it would be a passive device. However, it isn't. This actually has active cooling, though in my testing, I only saw it come on once, and I wasn't really able to hear it unless I had my head right next to it. I've been running this switch for weeks now, sitting on a shelf in an enclosed rack, and to the best of my knowledge, it hasn't come on once. Looking at this device on video or in pictures, it doesn't look all that impressive. However, you'd be surprised how heavy and well built this thing is. If we look at the overview screen in the Unify controller, we can see that they actually list the temperature and the fan speed, which currently is 70 degrees C, and the fan is currently off. Based on my experience, the temperature has to hit around 74, 75 degrees plus or minus in order for the fan to even start kicking in. It's a variable fan speed setting which is adjusted based on the load. So you'd have to hit this pretty hard in order to get the fans high enough to actually hear them. When I loaded the switch to about 50% of this rating, I did get it to kick in, but only on the first setting, which was barely audible. And it only ran for a short time until the temperature reduced and then went and shut itself off again. Digging into the configuration of the device is pretty much what you would expect from Ubiquity. On the first screen, is the overview which shows you the IP address, the MAC address, and as we mentioned, the temperature and fan speed, in addition to the memory amount and the power budget that you've used on the switch already. Clicking over to ports shows you the current status of each port, and clicking on the ports button allows you to have access to the typical settings such as naming or renaming, enabling or disabling PoE, and of course changing the profile of a particular port if you're using VLANs. Going to the settings sections is pretty standard as well for Unify, the ability to change the name, profile, and if you want to move the whole switch to a VLAN. Global settings, which you can customize if you need to, and some settings for the display. Let's talk a bit about performance and why we need the extra speed of a 2.5 gigabit PoE switch. If we take a quick look at some recent testing I did while reviewing some PCI adapter cards, you can see that the Wi-Fi speeds of 6E can far exceed the limits of a 1 gigabit connection. And you'll need at least a 2.5 gigabit switch to take full advantage of the performance. There are other ways that you can do this, such as getting a standard 2.5 gigabit unmanaged or managed switch, which are cheaper, along with a 2.5 gigabit PoE injector, both of which I've included some affiliate links to. But when you upgrade to a managed switch, 
and add more than a couple injectors, this device begins to look a little bit more attractive given its 120 watt power budget for access points and cameras. If you're in the Unify ecosystem, then this of course is the best way to go. In summary, I'm truly happy with the results now that I have the power to run either 1 gigabit or 2.5 gigabit devices and have a total power budget of 120 watts. The fact that it completely integrates into the Unify controller just makes the hardware that much easier to integrate and a lot more flexible. Anyway, that's about it for today's video. And if you have any questions, please post them in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.